Next question. What is a memory that makes you smile? Well, I'm writing my new book right now, Body Waving Through the Book. And so I'm having to do a lot of memory searching because it's a memoir. I call it a midlife memoir because it will definitely be another memoir at 80. And that's when you'll really get the tea, honey. So I've been having to like go back in memory. So I've been getting to do a lot of smiling because, you know, you're just trying to think of different things. And one of the stories in there is about uh, just my time in high school. Ah, DP. Ah, DP. Always brings a smile to my face. Like, don't get me wrong. I mean, I still had like my high school stuff, but I think I was very, very lucky to have the high school experience I did. And I just feel like my class was like Harry's at Hogwarts. Like we were just one of a kind. Next question. Is there ever a point where you will become a professor? I doubt it. You know, the thing about me is that I really don't do well in institutionalized spaces. I didn't realize how much of an institution Hollywood was until I really made it. And then it was like, oh, this is just another institution. And your girl, it just ain't cut for that. I'm just not cut out. I'm too, I'm too bohemian. I'm too free. I'm too liberated. And I feel like the academic space is really that. Now, I guess there's a version of which you can do some type of adjunct, adjunct professorship or whatever. But the reality is I don't want nobody telling me nothing. And, and I don't want nobody I don't respect telling me nothing. And that's the frustrating part about institutionals. Institutions oftentimes are people who are in a position that feels like power, but that isn't necessarily earned. You know, they're not necessarily actually like valid or full of merit. So you're having to take. That's like why selling shows gets so frustrating because you're sometimes pitching people who you're like, I don't even know you. I don't respect you. Like you've never done anything that like makes me regard or laud you. And here I'm having to like pitch you my creativity? What have you created? So I doubt that you'll see me as a professor, but I do want to continue to create, you know, learning spaces of my own. Next question. What are five places in the world you haven't been to, but that you want to go? Oh, I love a question like this. Okay. I would love to go to Bali. Never been to Bali. I've literally never been to Asia. So I would love to go to Bali. I'm I'm just going to count this as one. So I would love to go to Bali, Thailand, China. Like I would love to just see Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam. I'd love to just see that part of the world. Um, I have never been to the Galapagos Islands and I would love to go to the Galapagos. Y'all know how I feel about animals. I would love to go. I have never been to the Congo. I would really love to go to the Congo, not only to see the bonobos, but also to be some, you know, some part of helping, you know, the people out there in the Congo, even if it's just to capture content that can help amplify what's going on in the Congo. Um, I would really like to see uh, Petra. Um, I think Petra is in... It's in the Levant somewhere. So it's either like Lebanon, Iran, et cetera, et cetera. But it's like this ancient city and it is just one of the most fascinating like builds that America, that humans have ever made. Uh, and then two, because I'm going to give you six instead of five, I really would love to go to Sudan. Again, not just because like there's humanitarian work to be done there, but because it's beautiful. Like there's so many places in Sudan, man-made and nature-made that are just incredible. And like what happens is particularly in Africa, places get just whittled down to whatever war-torn um, conflict is happening in that place. But that oftentimes, instead of it making people feel like that's what needs to save that place, oftentimes people like kind of are no longer looking at that place as a place worthy of being saved. Like, oh my gosh, it's just war-torn. And we need to just once again, like elevate the beauty of Africa and the fact that the people of Africa, they deserve to live in that beauty in freedom. And the last place I want to go is I want to go to Palestine. And I hope with all of my heart that on the other side of this tyranny and this degradation and just degenerative behavior amongst human beings that has led to a genocide, I hope that the people of Palestine are given the ability to self-actualize and build their land. And I hope that I get the opportunity to come back there and help rebuild. How was your experience as a child actor? Oh, so y'all was watching that Nickelodeon. Mm-hmm. They went, <laughs> some people are asking about Dan too, but we won't talk so about it. So I never met Dan. I mean, he wasn't a part of my experience. Um, you know, my experience as a child actor was actually rather positive. I mean, my brother and me, we only did one season. The cast and the staff were very black. Um, I was luckily, I was lucky enough to be shooting, like, I'm not even exaggerating, six minutes from my house. Um, So I also had a certain, like, comfort just in proximity to home. And I was 12, uh, but I was always a very 
elevated child, I guess to say. So I was 12 going on like 18 in terms of like my awareness of my surroundings. And my mother would have to drop me off and go to work. So other people's parents got to stay there all day. I didn't have that luxury. But I was also a well-behaved kid. Like I knew that I didn't want nobody calling my mom. (laughs) You know? And I also was not just a well-behaved kid, but I also knew, even at that age, I just knew the measure of what I was getting the opportunity to do. So I wasn't going to try and screw that up either. But I didn't have, like, when I was on my brother and me in particular, like, I didn't have any negative experiences with Nickelodeon. There was this one, like, dude that was racist or whatever. and But all of us would just be like, get the f- out of here, Joel. Um, but my mom always reminds me that there was a time where the director was having one-on-ones with all the parents because the kids were apparently out of control. And so then my mom came in and he was like, oh, Amanda's a dream. There's nothing for us to talk about. <laughs> so that's why when y'all be like, oh, Amanda Seals is difficult to work with. I ain't never been difficult to work with, even when I was 12. I'm difficult to work with because I demand excellence and I'm not very sweet about it. That's why I'm difficult to work with. I also demand you to do the thing you said you was going to do, like on paper that I signed on. But there's that's a whole other conversation. I'd be trying to be sweeter about it, though. I do. Because I know that that's, that's a human necessity. So I do be trying. But sometimes your girl don't got it. Your girl don't got it. Um, I do remember one time, though, where I was doing a commercial and they tried to stuff my bra. Yes, child. What? They were like, yeah, like we would just, can you, like, let's, like, let's just, like, stuff your bra. And I was like, I don't feel comfortable doing that. I was 15. And um, so she was like, you know, okay. So then I immediately went and told my mom. And then my mom was like, doof. Did you just tell my child to stuff her bra? By the way, this is for like an industrial commercial for the USDA. Like, I don't know why, like, the farmers need me to have tissue titties. Okay. <laughs> so. Weird stuff like that happens. Um, I think also people just get overcomfortable with kids on set. And kids, we're there being professional, so they adultify us. And so that's why it's so important to have a parent or guardian or representative that is making sure that that is not going too far. And it's so disheartening to see real concrete 4K evidence of people like Amanda Bynes and Ariana Grande not having the people there that needed to be doing that. What are you going to do just for yourself and your joy today? Eat cheese. I'm going to have the last of my cheese, my Dubliner cheese sticks. And then I have to go on a break because I'd be doing too much. So I'm going to have to not have cheese for the rest of the month. But y'all, I'm going to savor every nibble of that cheese stick. I know some of y'all are like, really? That's the best you could do? Yes, because I am very busy. (laughs) But I've been thinking about that cheese stick all day. As I look for the next question, I just want to say your fans and supporters are really riding for you. Everyone is like, I just want to check in. Are you okay? No question. I love you. So you're loved. Just know that. We got your back. Thanks, y'all. As an only child and as like a geek, a late bloomer, someone who was like bullied for various reasons. I would be bullied for all kinds of reasons. I don't like you. You talk white. I don't like you. You light skin. I don't like you. You think you're smarter than everybody else. You an encyclopedia. And I'd be like, well, I just knew the answer. <laughs> like, So that was like my formative years. Like those are the things that I would be bullied for. I don't even know what I'm being bullied for in this case, to, if I'm being perfectly honest. I just don't even know because they can't even get their act together. They can't even get on the same page about like what the issue is. You know, it's just basically like, I mean, we don't like her tone. But I just feel like, I. what's my tone? I mean, and there's so many people who f- are fine with my tone and love the tone and feel empowered by the tone. So it's also a measure of ego when people feel like, well, my version of this is the version that matters. But I will say that it really, as that person who has always kind of been, you know, in the space of having a target, um, it really feels just really, really if it, it's like a really big deal to feel supported in this way. I've never been supported in this way in my life. And uh, it's not um, a small thing. I mean, you know, I can't be a SEAL, but y'all could be a member of the SEAL squad. We do this essentially every week on the bonus episode of Small Doses Podcast. You guys can be in the live asking questions in real time. And even if you can't be there, you still get access to the episode. So uh, that's been a really cool space, all my SEAL squad members. So shout out to all my SEALs. <laughs> 